So for this video, I'm going to be going through each of the weapons that are currently in Artifact and talking about when you would consider purchasing these throughout the course of a game and which ones you might want to consider putting in your decks, uh, both for Constructed and I'll, I'll mention a couple of times where you might want to consider something in Draft as well. So uh, right out of the gate, we have Short Sword. This is the basic weapon and Artifact during the closed beta, and I assume it will be the same during launch. You always have these available. If you are building a draft deck, it's a great filler item if you need weapons. Specifically, heroes that might want you to run short swords in your draft deck would be anything that has less than four attacks, so your cannas, your ogres, things like that. Uh, and that's because you want a hero to have at least four attack if you can help it, so that it will auto clear, auto kill those melee creeps. That keeps your gold income coming, it helps keeps the lanes clear, and if it takes more than one turn to clear the creep, it also means you're going to take damage per creep uh, at a much higher rate. So uh, short swords can be a great addition to a draft deck, uh, certainly a great filler card, and even more so if you've got heroes with low attack values. Now, first up after the short sword, we have the Magicking Maul. Uh, this card is actually good. This is one of uh, the few that I would consider putting in a constructed deck. I have seen this run in constructed in the closed beta. It's 5 gold, you still get 2 attack, just like the short sword, but the active is what makes this important. The active is, condemn a random enemy improvement, may only be used if equipped hero is unblocked. Now, unblocked means uh, that a unit is unblocked if its combat target is the tower. So, if it, it's not just if there's nothing in front of it, but it also has to have its arrow essentially pointing toward the tower. This is great because it's got an active cooldown of 1, meaning every time your hero is unblocked, you can use this to nuke an enemy improvement. Decks that want to run this are ones that don't have great ways to clear enemy improvements. Uh, also, decks that might want to run this are aggressive decks. These are decks where you don't want to use your mana on getting rid of improvements. You'd rather use your mana on developing threats. And gold is a secondary resource. It does not take the mana from your tower. So if you can use gold to do something like give your heroes more attack, which you already want in an aggressive deck anyway, and then also potentially get rid of pesky improvements like uh, Conflagration or Ignite, hey, the Magicking Maul starts to look pretty promising. So I have seen this run in Constructed. And again, you typically want to run this in decks where you might not have improvement removal or aggressive decks that might want to use their mana on uh, developing more threats, more tempo, more pressure in a lane. So, uh, next up we have Stonehall Pike. Uh, just like all the other Stonehall items in the game, this one is uh, a flat value and then it modifies the item with uh, an additional plus one at the end of every combat phase. So, uh, hero has two attack for six gold, and after every combat phase they get one more attack. Uh, this is okay. Sometimes I will consider running this in draft if I just didn't get a lot of useful items or if I have a particularly aggressive build because it kind of helps you snowball your incidental damage when your hero does hit a tower. But because it doesn't provide any additional utility, it's not typically run in constructed. In fact, most of the items you're going to hear me talk about running in constructed are really ran because of the utility they provide. They help you shore up things that might be missing from your normal deck and this just doesn't provide that. So it's an okay buy. Uh, again, if you really need attack and it is an option in your draft deck, you might run it. If it comes up in the secret shop and you need attack, might be useful there, but probably not something you're running in constructed. Blade of the Vigil, uh, similar, right? Plus two attack, seven gold, but this provides plus two cleave. This is, again, not something that I would consider putting in my constructed deck, but I have run it a decent amount in draft. A lot of times it depends on what I drafted and what my hero pool is. So if I don't have a lot of board sweeps, if I didn't draft blue, for example, Blade of the Vigil starts to get really attractive, uh, even more so if I have a hero like Sven. You throw one Blade of the Vigil on Sven, and now he's clearing uh, melee creeps on the left and the right of whatever his primary target is every time. So that can be useful. And if Blade of the Vigil pops up in the secret shop and I'm, again, struggling to maybe clear out a lane, it might be attractive there. But outside of that, again, you'll notice no utility, no cool actives, it's just damage, 
and the plus two attack for seven gold when you could just run a short sword for three gold uh, makes it not super attractive in your draft deck unless you are short on board clears. So, uh, Blade of the Vigil. Now, uh, Blink Dagger. Blink Dagger is one of the ones that is constructed viable. This is very, very good. This is also seven gold, still only provides two attack, but the active is very useful. The active moves the equipped hero to another lane. You don't get to pick the landing spot, but you do get to pick the lane. This can help you move your heroes that might be in a stranded lane that you have either overcommitted to uh, or that your opponent shoved your heroes into. There are effects where your opponent can push your heroes around. Uh, this can help get them out. And it's got a pretty short cooldown. You can use it once every two rounds. And this is insurance when you're new. Blink Dagger is one of those cards that is much better when you first start playing the game because you might not be very good at hero placement yet and it starts to go down in value the better at the game you get but it never fully loses its value because even if you become perfect at hero placement again your opponent your enemy may have ways to shove your heroes around and if you don't have a way to get them back out of stranded lanes or back out of lanes where they're not generating you value then you're going to be in a world of hurt. Uh, Town Portal Scroll only has a 25% chance of showing up, and I would be lying if I said that uh, I had never lost a game because Town Portal Scroll never showed up. So uh, having something like Blink Dagger as insurance is valuable, and it's certainly constructed worthy, constructed playable. You will see it in constructed decks. Next up, we have Broadsword. Uh, this is 7 gold, much like all of... Uh, the other ones we've been seeing recently but this one is just straight equipped hero has plus four attack so you lose the utility but you double the attack value um not much really to say here you would buy this if you just really need attack uh, maybe it shows up in the secret shop and you're playing an aggressive deck or something to that effect but you're not really going to run this in constructed there's just much much better uh, weapons that you can equip. Jasper Daggers. Uh, this is another one of those things that you might keep your eye out for in the secret shop. Probably not good enough to run in constructed right now. It is the sort of card you'd keep your eye on depending on a meta. If the meta ever goes very armor heavy, yeah, I could see an argument potentially being made for this. So, uh, seven gold again. Uh, equipped hero has plus two attack and pierce. So, pierce specifically says. Battle damage dealt by this unit is piercing. Piercing damage is not reduced by the target's armor. Now, if a target has negative armor and you have pierce, it will still amplify the damage as normal. But if they have positive armor, then having pierce just means you treat it as if it had zero armor. So if somebody has an axe and then they threw stonehall armor on it and that thing's up to like seven, eight armor in a long game, and Jasper Daggers shows up in your secret shop, hey, pick it up because you can shred right through Axe or whoever else has all that armor, a Mazzy or something, uh, like they had none. But again, probably not worth a constructed slot just because while getting through armor is important, there's not enough of it to warrant putting something like this in over something with utility. The things to note about something like this versus the utility items as well is uh, Pierce is only useful if you end up lined up against something with armor. So even if your enemy does have, you know, two or three heroes that have a lot of armor, if your hero never lines up against them, then the Pierce is still useless. Whereas with something like the Magicking Maul, if they line up against a hero, sweet, you got plus two attack. And if they are not against a hero, and maybe it's an open slot, sweet, I can use the activation, right? Like, the utility here is just far more beneficial than the pierce which is why you don't like pick this in constructed but you might keep an eye out in your secret shop uh keen folk musket keen folk musket is seven gold equipped heroes plus two attack uh the active is deal two damage to a unit and you can use this once every two rounds the active is actually really beneficial i find myself enjoying keen folk musket in draft often because this is Basically like Broadsword, right? Broadsword is plus four attack for seven gold. This is like plus four attack once every two rounds and plus two attack every other round. 
but the extra damage you deal with the musket is something that you can kind of shove around the board and that is very beneficial that does provide some utility it can help you uh, keep some of your other units alive by picking off something before it takes damage you can target low heroes with this it's just uh, a nice utility item not constructed worthy in my mind because the power of mauls and daggers are just better than this but like in a draft if i end up with one of these i'm, I'm not really upset so keenfolk musket uh, a little bit better than some of the other weapons we've looked at so far poaching knife uh, poaching knife is interesting it's eight gold for two attack so the return on investment there is not great and it has no utility directly but you do get five gold after an enemy hero dies and one gold after an enemy creep dies in other words your gold gain from killing things doubles while you have poaching knife now the trick is whoever has the poaching knife equipped has to survive for you to get the bonus so if you have this on a hero and it's killing another hero but they're both going to die you do not get the bonus gold but if you have this on a hero and an enemy hero dies for whatever reason then you get bonus gold in that lane and that can help you snowball there's just a lot of risk here you're already overpaying for the item i mean realistically you're almost paying triple short sword is three gold for two attack and that's all this provides is two attack and you're paying eight gold for maybe the chance of getting some additional gold in return so you have to have at least one hero die and have yours survive and get that bonus five gold to break even on this right because that would be three for the short sword and then the bonus five and then anything after that is a bonus but a lot of times just saving the five gold uh would have been better anyway as opposed to like really playing the long game so yeah poaching knife is interesting could I see this having a, an impact in the future at some point? Potentially. I mean, gold gain is pretty strong. There's certain decks that are entirely based around things like payday. But right now, because no utility, heavy investment, I'm just not seeing this played very much in Constructed. Uh, next up is Red Mist Maul. This one, I think, is very, very interesting. Uh, it's 10 gold for only plus 2 attack. But the hero gets plus 5 siege. Now... Siege damage, if you're not familiar, says uh, essentially when blocked during the combat phase, in addition to the battle damage to the blocking unit, you also deal the siege damage to the enemy tower. So if your hero is unblocked, they're going to do whatever their normal damage is, and this adds two to it. But if they are blocked, they'll deal five siege damage. And sometimes it's interesting, if you throw a red mist maul on somebody like Kana, for example, you actually want your canna to be blocked in order to deal more damage to the tower because she would only have four attack but would do five siege damage if she was blocked um red mist maul is something that i find myself uh, often including in draft because it's a very nice aggressive item and if i see it in the secret shop and i'm playing an aggressive deck i do purchase it and i've even toyed around with playing it in constructed i'm not 100 percent convinced it's better than the utility items it's like on the cusp of maybe being constructed viable. Uh, if you find the right aggressive deck, I could see it because siege damage adds up and it forces the opponent to really start trying to condemn your heroes to prevent damage. This is like a, a sense of inevitability is the result of this card, right? So... Siege damage is great if you're playing an aggressive deck, if you're playing something that's really focused on Siege, maybe it's a red-black or something. Uh, this has the potential to be constructed viable. I'm not seeing it a lot right now in the closed beta uh, as of recording this, but that would not shock me if I did see this at some point. So, next up we take a big jump from 10 gold for the Red Mist Maul to 15 gold for the Claymore. This is just a flat... Equipped hero has plus eight attack. Um, not a lot to say, right? If you've got a bunch of gold and this is in the secret shop and you just want a bunch of attack, okay, I guess, buy it. It's right up there with the broadsword, right? Like if you need the attack and your item shop doesn't have anything, but this is in the secret shop, great. Otherwise, I don't think you're throwing this into your uh, constructed item deck because no utility, no extra value. Uh, Wingfall Hammer. This is 19 gold. 
second most expensive weapon in the game. Equipped Hero has plus four attack, but has a pretty cool active. Uh, you give Equipped Hero and its allied neighbors, that means uh, units on the left and the right of it, plus X regeneration this round, where X is half of its attack. So at a minimum, it's going to be plus two regen because this provides plus four attack. And then it's going to be also on top of whatever the attack on the hero is. So even on something like, again, like Kana, for example, this would be plus three regeneration. Uh, regeneration is good because it's applied before the damage is. So if your hero would be taking enough damage to die, but the regen would keep them alive, then the regen does keep them alive in Artifact. Makes things very resilient. The downside, however, is that it requires an activation. So even though you can activate this every round, and that's great, sometimes if you're activating something, you run the risk of giving away initiative. And while Blink Dagger is worth an activation or Demagicking Ball is worth an activation because you are doing something very proactive, um, this is more of a defensive activation. And so even when it might be right to activate this, there are times where it won't necessarily feel good to activate this. And that's not where you want to be when something costs 19 gold. So this is, in my opinion, right now in the current meta, uh, strictly a secret shop item. If it comes up and you really need attack and you've got a surplus of gold, maybe you buy this, but I don't think you're running this in your constructed deck. There's just better ways to keep your heroes and your units alive. And then last, but certainly not least, we get uh, the big daddy, uh, the Apotheosis Blade. This is 25 gold. It's the most expensive item in the game, but it's got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, equipped hero has plus eight attack, plus four siege, so it's great siege numbers, great attack numbers. Uh, better still, condemn each unit equipped hero deals battle damage too. So it doesn't matter if the enemy has 30 health for some reason, maybe it's a Stonehall Cloak gone crazy. Uh, if you deal one damage to the enemy, you condemn it. Condemn means kill. They are going back to the fountain. Uh, this also has an active that can be used once every round, and the active is fantastic. Uh, it condemns enemy improvements. Let that sink in. Condemns enemy improvements. No random, no one, no target. If they have improvements in the lane, they no longer have improvements in the lane. It'll take out two or three or four at a time. Uh, also, condemn each item equipped by the unit blocking it. So if your hero is up against another hero, not only are you likely going to just condemn them outright, but if they have items, you're going to strip them of their items too. This is a tide-turning style weapon. Um, this is often run as a one or a two of in the gold gain style decks, right? The things that want to make use of track and payday, uh, those synergies. Apotheosis Blade is often used as the way to get rid of uh, enemy improvements, get rid of enemy items, and the siege damage adds up. So this is a fantastic card if you've got a lot of ways to generate gold. Uh, it will certainly go in the constructed decks that want to do that. So those are usually uh, either like a red-black hero killer or a blue-black uh, control deck. This definitely has a home. It's one of the best ways to potentially get rid of uh, vestments. So I'm sure I'll talk about it in another video where I go over the armor items, but uh, the Tyrant armor is very, very good. It's been seeing a lot of play in the meta, and if you can get rid of that uh, with something like Apotheosis Blade, that will do wonders. So uh, that about covers it. Uh, items are really important in Artifact. Knowing which ones you want to include and why, I think, is something that will help a lot of new players out. So I do hope that this helped you. Uh, one final quick recap, if you're thinking about constructed play, I think that the big three that you would want to consider as far as uh, weapons go are Demagicking Maul, Blink Dagger, and Apotheosis Blade. That's because of the utility that their activations provide. And then my honorable mention would be Red Mist Maul for certain aggressive decks. So uh, again, if this helped you, Fantastic. I really, really hope that it did. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.